Hi, this is Dr. Mark Friedberg. I'm talking to you today from Red Bank, New Jersey, and I'll be discussing retinal detachments. I'll be talking to you about the symptoms and signs of retinal detachments. I'll be discussing the different types of retinal detachments, and I'll be discussing the features that distinguish retinal detachments from some of the conditions that look similar to retinal detachments. Um, I'll be talking about risk factors for detachments and basically how to manage everything related to retinal detachment. So, for our first slide, um, I'd like to just state that there are basically three different types of retinal detachment. The first type is a regmatogenous retinal detachment. Um, these are the ones we're all familiar with. Patients with regmatogenous detachments have a retinal tear that led to the detachment or retinal tears that led to the detachment. Um, they need to be fixed fairly promptly, sometimes more emergently than others, depending on the type of retinal detachment. Um, they need surgery of some sort to fix them. And if you don't fix them, the patient will lose all their vision. These are the ones we're familiar with. These are the ones we don't want to miss. Regmatogenous detachments. Um, the second type of retinal detachment I'll be discussing uh, is known as an exudative retinal detachment. Exudative retinal detachments um, don't have tears in the retina and don't usually need surgery. Um, they can look similar to regmatogenous detachments, and sometimes even the best experts can't distinguish the two. Um, they often have an underlying disorder that's responsible for the exudative detachment, and the, the treatment is usually to fix the underlying exudative disorder. And finally, the third type of retinal detachment that we'll be discussing is known as a traction retinal detachment. This is when fibrous tissue grows onto the surface of the retina and pulls the retina off the wall of the eye. Um, you can see in this slide here, uh, we have fibrous tissue. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but maybe you get a pointer here. Um, there's fibrous tissue here. I'm putting little dots on it. Uh, and this tissue uh, is very thick and stronger than the retina and basically it's pulling the retina off of the wall of the eye. Um, the causes for this we'll get into a little bit later. So we'll start out, and, and by the way you can have more than one type of retinal detachment at a time. You could have a combined uh, regmatogenous traction detachment, for example, where there's scar tissue, but the scar tissue pulled so hard it tore a hole in the retina or, or pulled a tear in the retina, and so you have a combination of regmatogenous and traction. And those are obviously more difficult to diagnose and deal with. So we're starting out with regmatogenous detachments. So first of all, what are the symptoms? And these again, these are the regmatogenous are the ones we all when we say retinal detachment, that's what we usually mean. If we just use the word retinal detachment, we're usually implying that it's a regmatogenous detachment. Um, and regmatogenous detachments often have symptoms. Usually patients will experience flashes of light. And, you know, a lot of patients are sent to me when they have flashes of light to examine their retina to make sure there's no tear. Um, the flashes of light associated with retinal tears and retinal detachments are generally quick zips of light. Um, they may be recurrent, so a patient will often say they, they see a quick, quick zip of light off to the side of their vision, usually in their peripheral vision. It lasts a second or two, and then they get another one. And they may get you know, multiple, one after another. It may not even stop, but there's a small interruption between each one. Now let's contrast that with another cause of a flashing light, um, migraine. Migraines can cause flashes of light, but they're totally different. Migraines cause a jagged, um, C-shaped arc of light that goes nonstop for about 20 minutes. 
and often interferes with the vision. So a, mig a migranous flash of light is usually a, a 5 to 60 minute episode. It's often described as a jagged, non-stop, flickering light. Now patients don't always notice it the entire time it's taking place. So sometimes they only catch the last few minutes when it's way off to the side. They often think it's in one eye. Um, they'll say it's like the left eye if it's to the left side. But it's often in both eyes. They don't always notice it. But if they cover one eye after they've had one episode, they'll often see it's in both eyes. And again, this is jagged, flickering, five to 60 minutes, nonstop, and often interfering with the vision as opposed to a quick flash of light from the retinal tear, retinal detachment spectrum, um, which is off to the side, lasts a second or two, but they get multiple. And it's most notable in the dark when it's due to the vitreous detachment, retinal detachment spectrum. Another symptom these patients with regmatogenins experience is floaters. Um, floaters are not specific to retinal tears and detachments and vitreous detachment. Um, floaters are obviously lines, dots, webs. And the more floaters a patient has, the more concerned I am that there's going to be a tear detachment of the retina. Um, but you need to distinguish floaters, as I said, could be due to other things. And you've got to make sure the patient doesn't have uveitis as the cause of their floaters. Um, uveitis, if you, if you take the slip beam and you push the slit lamp, if you're looking at the lens and then you move the slit lamp in closer to the eye, you'll see the vitreous. And if you make a small beam, you can often see if there's cells in the vitreous. Now with the regmatogenous detachment, you may see vitreous pigment, but there shouldn't be a hundred floaters as you would see with uveitis. Um, it is confusing sometimes. But uveitis causes white blood cells. The cells you see from retinal detachment are either going to be brown or red, depending on whether it's hemorrhage or just pigment. And finally, the last and most concerning symptom the patients with regmatogenous detachments have is something in their peripheral vision. Patients will often describe a curtain or a shadow blocking the peripheral vision um, or part of it. And it doesn't have to be that. They just see something. They'll say to me, I see something off to the side or in the corner or a crescent or a, a ball or a balloon or they'll notice something in their peripheral vision. And so flashes of light, floaters, something obstructing the peripheral vision, um, are the symptoms of erygmatogenous detachment. Um, as far as the signs or in other words the things that we'll see when someone has it, um, you might see pigment in the vitreous. As I said, you have to push the slit lamp close to the Look at the lens and then push it closer to the eye, the slit lamp, so your beam is now focused in the vitreous. And if you see brown pigmented cells, that could be a sign of retinal detachment. Um, more, the other signs that you'll see, you should see a retinal tear if it's a regmatogenous detachment, but tears are sometimes hard to find. Um, they're best seen by scleral depression. Um, I find that all the other techniques, if you just look with the indirect ophthalmoscope, number one, you're not going to see 360 degrees of retina. Number two, the flap, the retinal tear, is sometimes the, the flap of the tear may settle back down to where it was, so you won't see the opening in the retina. But if you take a scleral depressor and push around the eyeball, the flap will pop up at you so you see the opening in the retina. So scleral depression is really the best way to see a retinal tear. Um, and um, often you'll see a, a, a reddish color at the base of a retinal flap um, consistent with the tear. The other indications, now obviously you can see tears and pigment when you don't have a retinal detachment. Um, the key to the retinal detachment is seeing that corrugated. And if you look at this slide in the top right hand corner, it has that corrugated, those white lines are corrugations in the retina. And that's a very classic sign. When you see that, you've got to be worried about retinal detachment. The other thing about retinal detachment is you cannot see the retina ordinarily. So if we look to the left-hand side of this slide, let's say from the fovea left or from the fovea inferiorly, you don't see the retina. What you're looking at is you're seeing the background fundus behind the retina. You're seeing the pigment epithelium, you're seeing the choroid, um, but you don't see the retina because the retina is transparent. It's clear. 
you can see the blood vessels in the retina, but you don't see the retina itself. But when you look to the upper right-hand corner of this slide, you can't see the fundus background. And the reason you can't see the fundus background is the retina becomes opaque when it's detached. So it's hard to see through it. So two of the classic signs of retinal detachment are number one, these corrugations, and number two, the opaqueness. You can't see through it. Now, obviously, there's going to be elevation of the blood vessels as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's hard to appreciate that unless you're looking 3D. Um, but that's one of the other things that you, you want to see with retinal detachment. Now, there are other signs that you can get. Uh, you can get an afferent pupillary defect, particularly if the entire retina is detached. You'll often get an afferent pupillary defect. And that's not a great prognostic sign. Um, and also, the intraocular pressure can be affected. Usually, the pressure will be lower in a retinal detachment, um, but in rare cases, the pressure can be elevated. So, you know, obviously these are nonspecific signs. Um, now, when someone has a chronic regmatogenous detachment, um, the retina can appear a little more, can appear a little differently. You'll sometimes get a demarcation line, and that would often be a pigmented line um, that separates the detached from the attached retina. And I'll show you one later on. Um, but the demarcation line is an indication that this retinal detachment has been present for months, if not longer. Um, and when it's a chronic retinal detachment, you'll often see white dots beneath the retina. Uh, you'll see large cysts within the retina. They're called macro cysts. So these are other findings that you can get. Um, but obviously, those are just with you know chronic retinal detachments. Now, what causes a vitreous what causes a retinal detachment? Well, the first the, most retinal detachments occur spontaneously, um, and they usually develop after vitreous detachment, most of them. And this is a sign of vitreous detachment. You can see this Weiss's ring um, over the optic disc, this white oval connection. This is a complete Weiss's ring. It's not always so easy to see. I find it's easiest to see with a 90 diopter lens. Sometimes you can see it with the indirect. Um, the Weiss's ring is an indication that the vitreous jelly has pulled away from the disc and usually the posterior retina. And sometimes when the vitreous pulls away from the retina, the vitreous tears the retina. And if you get a tear of the retina and you don't fix it, you get a retinal detachment. And here's another example of a Weiss's ring. Um, indicative of vitreous detachment, and when someone has the symptoms of a vitreous detachment, also new floaters and flashing lights, um, they'll often see a cobweb when they see the when they have a full Weiss's ring. Um, you need to carefully look at the retina, and I I usually advocate scleral depression again, so you could get a full look at the retina um, to see if there's a tear, because if left untreated, that can lead to retinal detachment. Another way that you can see a vitreous detachment is with an OCT. This is an OCT scan that shows um, vitreous detachment. Um, for those of you who watched my OCT lecture, and by the way, I think I'm going to do OCT2 next year if anybody liked the first one. Try to make it better. Um, but in any case, uh, here's your retina. Um, from here to here, and uh, above in the black hollow vitreous cavity, you have this line, and that's the posterior hyloid face. Otherwise, it's in other words, it's the part of the vitreous that's normally attached to the retina. Um, so this posterior hyloid face, the fact that you can see it above the retina means the vitreous is detached. I'm trying to change the next slide. There we go. Um, here's another example um, of the vitreous detachment being shown on OCT scan. Um, 
there's the posterior hyaloid face being pointed to by arrows. You can actually see the vitreous above the posterior hyaloid face in this situation. There's a lacunae, um, like a space of fluid and more solid vitreous above that has a granular appearance. There's still a little vitreous attachment to the optic disc, as you can see um, by the large arrow. Um, so you don't always get a complete vitreous detachment. Sometimes part of it detaches and not others. And that's why when somebody comes in with vitreous detachment, 